Hi folks, milling a sphere. Not particularly difficult, but so many different ways to do it. So Jeffrey's gonna take us through a Wednesday widget today doing a deep dive on all of the different ways that we can mill a sphere and really talk about what matters when it comes to how you present the cutting tool to the material, whether you do it in a single operation and some of the hacks to do that, or if you split it up into separate operations within Fusion, which presents its own situation of both good and bad ways to do it. So let's dive in. So starting out on this part, we're going to use a three flute quarter inch Lakeshore carbide end mill with a 3D adaptive strategy. We're going to spin it at 9,000 RPM, feed it at 200 inches per minute, and give it an optimal load of 30 thousandths. Since this is a pretty fast feed rate for this machine, and there are going to be a lot of tight moves throughout this part, we definitely want to make sure that smoothing is selected. So next up, we need to finish the bottom floor of this part. We're going to use the same end mill and a 2D contour strategy. So under the geometry tab, we select the circles below the spheres. Then for stock contours, we're going to select the outside edge of the part. Under the passes tab, for roughing passes, we're going to give it a maximum step over of 100 thousandths and then we're going to give it some very large number of step overs. It could be 100, it could be 200. But with that, Fusion is going to generate passes moving away from the selected geometry at the distance of the maximum step over value, and then it's going to trim off those passes around our stock contours. So another thing to point out is the gradual entrance we've created into the center sections that we can't enter from the side. So within our 2D contour, under linking, we're able to give it a small horizontal lead-in radius and a large vertical lead-in radius. So what this does is create a helix type move right as we're entering into the material, which is gonna give a more gradual entrance and ultimately better surface finishes. So before we dive into the 3D surfacing of this part, let's take a second to talk about something that is going to hold true no matter what toolpath you ultimately decide to use. So here we have the shape modeled of a quarter inch ball nose end mill. And if we take a closer look, we can see that if the contact point of our cut is closer to the tip of the end mill, then the actual diameter is going to be smaller. If the contact point is higher up on the end mill, you're going to have a larger cutting diameter, which is going to give you a higher surface speed and ultimately more room to evacuate chips. On a ball nose end mill, the closer to the tip of the end mill you are, the smaller the flutes are, the less room there is to get the chips away from the cut. So if we take a second to look at the simulation, we can see how that can be applied. For this first example, we're machining from the bottom up or from the outside in. The majority of the material is being removed at a larger diameter on the ball. This is what we're looking for. In comparison, in this example, we're machining from the top down or from the inside out. And if we stop it and take a look, the majority of the material being removed is down right next to the tip of the end mill. At this point, the diameter of your tool is very small, which is going to give you low surface speeds, and there's not much room there to evacuate the chips. So machining these spheres with any tool path, our goal is to go from the outside in. So we used the same exact quarter inch Lakeshore Carbide two flute ball nose end mill throughout this entire video. We keep our feeds and speeds nice and consistent too. 
We're going to spin it at 10,000 RPM and feed it at one and a half thou per tooth. So for the first sphere on this part, we use 3D contour. Fusion 360 says that this is the best finishing strategy for steep walls on your part. So within contour, under the passes tab, we're given the option to set a maximum step down. We set ours at eight thousandths. We also selected order bottom up to make that end mill run in the direction we want. So when we look at this toolpath from the side, we can see that the vertical change between the passes stays the same all the way up the part. From the side, this looks pretty good, but when we rotate around to the top of the sphere, we can see that areas that don't have a lot of vertical change are going to have a large horizontal step over. This is going to leave a pretty large scallop, and the very top of the sphere isn't going to finish all the way, but we still wanted to show you guys what this would look like on an actual machined part. For the second sphere on this part, we are going to use scallop. Scallop creates a toolpath where the absolute distance between the step overs stays the same. So under the passes tab within scallop, we have the option to set this step over and it directly gives us the option to change from inside and outside directions. Again, for this application, we want outside in. Another thing to pay attention to within scallop is this direction option. We want to climb a mill as much as possible. This is going to leave better surface finishes and make your tools last longer. So because scallop is designed to cover many different arbitrary shapes, it is not as simple as Fusion 360 saying climb or conventional milling. Instead, they have it labeled as one way, other way, or both ways. This is something that you just have to play with for your specific application and ultimately try to create as much climb milling as possible. For this application, the downside of scallop is unfortunately you can slightly see the transition lines in your final part. As we've talked about before, scallop creates a toolpath of which the passes are an absolute distance from each other. This works very well on the areas of your part that don't have a lot of vertical change. So the top of this sphere ended up looking much better than our first sphere where we only used contour. But the downside to scallop would be that on areas of your part where there is a lot of vertical change, you're going to have some redundant passes. So down on the edges of your sphere where there is a lot of vertical change, we would be able to program with a much larger step over and still get a very good looking surface finish. So ultimately, a very common practice is to actually use a blend of scallop and contour on your part. So for our third sphere, we are going to do just that. We are going to cover the bottom side of the sphere with contour and the top side with scallop. So Fusion 360 gives us a very simple way to do this. Under the Geometry tab, we can select Slope and then input two angles of a range for which we want this toolpath to cover. So for the first one, Contour, we want to cover from 29 to 90 degrees. When we hit OK, the toolpath is generated where the top side of the sphere is left alone. So for Scallop, we use the angles 0 to 30 degrees just to give a little bit of an overlap and cover the top side of the sphere. We programmed our contour toolpath to an 8 thousandths step down and our scallop toolpath to an 8 thousandths step over. So with both of these together, we have a total cycle time of 18 minutes and 54 seconds. 
Whereas the previous sphere that we did was entirely done with scallop with an 8,000 step over. And there we have a cycle time of 21 minutes. It did not compromise the looks of it in any way, but we were able to take a few minutes out of the cycle time. So by splitting that sphere into two different tool paths, we were able to save a little bit of cycle time. So if the goal is to save cycle time and still make a good looking part, then expanding on that strategy is a good way to go. So for the next sphere we're going to talk about, we split it into four different operations. The first three are contour, and then we finish the top with scallop. So for the more vertical areas of the sphere, within contour, we can use a much larger step down. For the first 20 degrees of the sphere, we use a step down of 20 thousandths. We then go to 15, 10, and then finish the top with an 8 thou step over with scallop. So with these four operations combined, we have a total machining time of 12 minutes. This was the fastest sphere that we machined, and while the surface finish might not be the best, it still looks very good. For the next sphere, we're going to talk about some more options within contour. So before we do that, let's take a second to look back at the first sphere that we machined with contour covering the entire part. So within that, under the passes tab, you have an option to set a maximum step down. That step down is the vertical distance between your passes, and the shortcoming of that is as you get to areas without a lot of vertical change, the horizontal step over becomes much larger and doesn't leave a great looking surface finish. But under the passes tab, you have an option to select machine shallow areas. For this, it gives you the option to input a minimum shallow step down and a maximum shallow step over. So what this does is going to limit the amount that a contour toolpath will step over and ultimately create a toolpath that is much more suited to finish areas with less vertical change. So if we look at this part, it is not the best looking sphere, it was not the fastest sphere to machine, but we wanted to show you that option within contour just so you know what all is available. For the final sphere on this part, we're going to use steep and shallow. So steep and shallow is great because you can cover a lot of different characteristics on your part with one toolpath. This helps you avoid the transition lines, simplify programming, and ultimately makes life easier. Within steep and shallow, under the passes tab, we can set a step down for our steep areas and a step over for our shallow passes. Within shallow, it gives us the option to select scallop or parallel for this circular geometry. We chose scallop. And then this continuous option really helped us out. So without that continuous box selected, you can see it gives a transition line. And really, we want to avoid those. So steep and shallow gives us that option that the scallop toolpath doesn't yet give us, but it helps a lot and looks great. Earlier in the video, we talked about the importance of going from the outside in. Really, the important part is going from the bottom up. So one complaint that we do have with steep and shallow is at this point, Time, we cannot adjust the order or the direction that it's going. So as you can see here, this end mill for the steep section is going from the top down. It then comes back and does the shallow section from the bottom up. So it's not perfect yet, but overall we are still big fans of steep and shallow.
Overall, we are very impressed with how well the Tormach 1100MX did on these spheres, but we wanted to do a comparison with a higher end machine and see if those transition lines were still there. See how much difference the surface finish would really have. So we used the same exact tool. We decided to use scallop. We used the same step over. We used the same feed per tooth and we went over to the Daytron Neo. So on the Daytron, the only thing that we changed was the spindle speed. We cranked this tool up to 35,000 RPM and that brought our cycle time clear down to six minutes. So on the Tormach, it took 21 minutes to machine the sphere. With everything the same except the spindle speed, we came all the way down to six minutes on the Daytron. You can see here that the transition lines are much less noticeable, the surface finish is smoother. That is not to put down Tormox. These machines have two very different price points. Overall the Tormox did great, but the Daytron is a higher end machine. So after everything that we've seen, everything that we've learned across these six spheres, I really wanted to come back to the Tormox to do one more and try to create the best looking sphere that we could. So. I found that contour was giving us the best results for the vertical areas of the sphere. And then really the best finish on the top was the continuous scallop within steep and shallow. So I dove into the 3D tool paths to find one that would give us the same effect. I found that Morph Spiral would do it for us. So we used Morph Spiral to cover the area from 0 to 45 degrees and under the Passes tab it gives us the option to set from outside in. We kept our step over pretty consistent throughout this video at 8 thousandths and then we can set our direction to make sure that we're climb mounting. So overall this was the best looking sphere on the Tormach and really there aren't any transition lines across that sphere. As always, folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care, see you soon.